Watch, I don't particularly care what some Yankee from New York City will... You don't know anything about wrestling. You don't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch, and I'm touching you in a wrestling match. You understand? That's, you know, this guy may be a great boxer, but he don't belong inside that squirt circle with a wrestler. That was proven, and that's for sure. This guy is nothing. This guy... This guy doesn't know wrist lock from a wrist watch. How can he get in there with a wrestler? Hello and welcome to the Wristwatch Takedown Podcast with me, Johnny Murray. And me, Johnny Lombard. And we're just going to talk nonsensically about wrestling for the next half hour, hour. Yeah. We'll see see how it goes. Um, it's the last week of January, so the Royal Rumble has just happened. And now it's down to Roman Reigns for the authority. This is not look good for Roman. Difficult. What's at stake? Reigns trying to power back the powerhouse. Reigns eliminates both men. Reigns eliminates Big Show and Kane. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns has won the Royal Rumble. Roman Reigns is headed to WrestleMania. The best Royal Rumble ever. <laughs> My favorite. Everyone, everyone is saying that. <laughs> it was the best Royal Rumble ever. Uh, no, it wasn't. No, probably <laughs> probably the top five worst that I've ever the top seen. Top five worst. Yeah, Jesus. the wor- right. the bottom five worst Royal bottom Rumbles. Bottom five worst Royal Rumbles. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't that. The, like, we're not. We're not going to do like because obviously every wrestling podcast is going to be talking about the Royal Rumble in depth. We're going to be the tenth review that you've heard yeah, so of the Royal Rumble. We're not going to fully review it. Um, We'll just say two things and then move on. You can't ignore it though, yeah. <laughs> you can't ignore it. <laughs> is that bad? Yeah. No, I mean, the, the, the triple threat match, I'm going to say, was one of the best uh, matches I've seen in a very long time. Like, definitely since WWE produced anyway. Yeah, I'll say this about that. It's it, In the last 10 years of WWE, you get so much bad that when you get a match like that, it kind of seems like the best match ever because <laughs> by contrast to all the other rubbish you've been watching but uh, no it was really great it was really great yeah I mean all three guys particularly I, I think that this was the first time for me that like, Seth Rollins I thought like that's, that's Shawn Michaels now that's, he's the next Shawn Michaels was that his like yeah, that, coming out party yeah that was, his, that was his coming out party to me that was like oh, okay you're the this is the real deal now he's a main event or not yeah definitely 100% like I, I said before the rumble happened and a friend of mine really wanted um, Rollins to win the belt uh, beforehand, he says, I want Rollins to win the belt and then he'll defend a mania against Roman Reigns. And <laughs> I was just like, no, they can't. They're, none of them are ready to main yeah. event WrestleMania. Yeah. And um, Seth Rollins is. I don't think Roman Reigns is yet. And I don't think Dean Ambrose is at the moment. Um, annoying. I th- I'm not, yeah, I, I, think, I think a lot of people are saying, and I agree, like there really should be more emphasis on the lower titles and I think if we had all three members of the shield at least in some sort of feud for like a like an IC belt or not the US belt it's kind of a novelty belt but like at least for the Intercontinental title I mean we should be having our Seth Rollins ladder matches for the Intercontinental title at the moment yeah if you had your way with Seth Rollins would you have him in a ladder match at Wrestlemania like Shawn Michaels if I had my way with Seth Rollins <laughs> I didn't mean that I didn't mean that actually uh, yes, yes I did yeah I think you know, I, I think a ladder match is quite an important part of Wrestlemania um, just because yeah. it's it's part of the spectacle it's, it's a good gimmick match um, it's always kind of difficult to have a good ending to it but I think Seth Rollins uh, you trust that he would pull that off. Yeah, I mean, again, I also, I also just would like the way he, he and Brock Lesnar kind of interacted in their match in that triple threat. I thought it was great, which is why I think the uh, Rumble itself was such a huge disappointment. Um, <laughs> Coming off of one of the best matches probably of the year to one of the worst. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I gave it, and everyone's saying exactly the same thing. I mean, like if it, if they'd <laughs> kept it, like do you agree? Like if they'd kept it at that level of that main event. And then the rumble was even passably good, then yeah. people would have said that was a great pay per view, and they would have completely disregarded everything else that came before the triple yeah. threat. But um, I think if that triple threat had followed that, it would have been yeah. too hard to follow that particular rumble just because it was the, the crowd got so angry. 
would the the crowd would have but, just hated everything then, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just such a badly booked, boring <laughs> rumble. And Nobody like, was interesting. Every wrestler meant nothing. There was no every wrestler meant nothing. It was like a parade of mid card, and this is why we're saying that this is this is the generation of the mid card. There's no main eventers anymore. And no, no, no. That was the whole point. I mean, like, full time main eventers. But anyway. the th- the thing is, though, yeah, exactly full time. But the thing is, like, you should go in the rumble and think. Well, literally anybody could win this. Yep. Like any one of these guys, well, obviously not any one of these guys, <laughs> but at least fifteen of them could yeah. potentially main event WrestleMania. Whereas in this match, I mean, you knew, you knew it wasn't going to be Bray Wyatt. You knew it wasn't going to be uh, Eric Rowan or Dean anyone. Ambrose, Dean Ambrose. Ambrose. You, well, I mean, you knew it was going to be Roman Reigns. You knew. Did it, you think Daniel Bryan had a shot? No. Do you think he didn't? I don't think he did. I think I think um, like romantically, you, you probably thought this will be what WWE do is yeah, they yeah. will give Daniel Bryan his win. He wasn't in the rubble long enough to really, you know, worry too much about but, that, but... Uh... But it wasn't even, I mean, it wasn't <laughs> even that. It was just like, it was just, he was so irrelevant. It was just completely irrelevant to the match. Like, he, he could have been anybody. Yeah. Which it makes me think, that's why I don't want to, I don't want to criticise too much because I don't know where they're going with it. I mean, again, we won't know till WrestleMania exactly what the story is. Yeah. And I hate people who say, like, Oh, you know they're burying him, and it's just because they don't know. Like you don't know what's happening. You don't work for that. You know you have an opinion. So you don't think? It, pe- yeah, people it could all be a grand plan. It could all be a grand scheme. <laughs> I mean, Raw drew a huge rating, and they didn't even have any matches on it. It's a lot of faith you're showing in that. <laughs> Was it the Rumble, the free show with the the free Rumble that uh, had the yeah. highest rating? Yeah, yeah then that it should have had the highest rating. Yeah, I suppose the they were showing the free. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when they showed Diamond Dallas Page on WCW Nitro with uh, Goldberg, wasn't it? Yeah, hundred billion people watched <laughs> that. People. It was the highest rated thing in the history of time. More people watched DDP and Goldberg than the moon landing. Yeah, and that's that's, that's the way the it should effect. be. That's and the way it should be. It's <laughs> more important because it actually happened, and the moon landing is obviously conspiracy. Actually, on the D D, let's not go there. You'll have a huge conspiracy. Actually, that'll, that'll be a good one for future shows. Is the wrestling, wrestling and conspiracies? But I think wrestling's involvement in modern conspiracies. There's only one man that could get to the bottom of that. Surely, you know who that is. Is this Vince Russo? Uh, Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. Oh, I completely Come on. forgot. Come on. I com- How did Softball. I forget? Jesus Christ. That's the word. That was so. brilliant. Check that out. If you haven't looked that up, I'm sure you have because you're listening to a wrestling podcast, but if you haven't watched Jesse Ventura Conspiracy Theories, Google it, YouTube it, and then thank us. It's um, it's better than any wrestling show you've probably seen. Better than any while. show you've ever seen in a while. <laughs> Lord, I can believe I forgot about that. Anyway, but yeah, the, the Royal Rumble. Back uh, to track, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not my worst Royal Rumble, but it was in the top, you know, the top few worst that I that I can remember anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, okay. I don't want to, I don't want to completely brag on the Rumble the no, whole no, time. No. It's just I think it's good to talk about it. I think mm. if we look at the Rumble generally as to um, how the WWE are telling stories, I think that Royal Rumble two thousand and fifteen will be used as like this is how not to tell a wrestling story. So what was wrong with the storytelling? I mean. Um, the big thing with it, I mean, usually in Rumbles, you'll follow, they'll have little mini stories each time, there'll be stuff like continuing a feud, um, even like old rivalries or old partnerships come together, like let's say there were wrestlers who used to tag together, and then they had a split, and now for the first time in months, they're in the same ring. There was none of that at all. Uh, they didn't even bring Devon Dudley back when they brought in Bubba, and Basics. They didn't. Basic they didn't need him. Didn't they? they didn't need him. They had uh, our truth. Yeah. Our uh, truth. I, I thought that was Devon Dudley. Wasn't it? No. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. This is interchangeable, man. Yeah, yeah I, it's that uh, it was just. So like like the two thousand wasn't it with too cool ending up in the Rumble yeah yeah it's too, at the too same cool time? and Rikishi and they danced they danced and um, that's again people like as we mini story people enjoyed <laughs> and uh, even like. Uh, ninety nine. Again, we'll just we'll do Attitude Era because that's just the easiest one to talk um, about. But the best era. Yeah, the, <laughs> but the um the, the ninety nine uh, Rumble where the No Chance in Hell where all the wrestlers if they whoever eliminated Stone Cold Steve Austin got a hundred thousand dollars, and that was the story of the Rumble, and it's like it was just you know, the story was Vince McMahon number one, Stone Cold Steve Austin number two, and then they're number twenty nine, number thirty, like well the the last two in and um. Yeah, yeah. Vince wins, and the whole and it gets himself a hundred thousand dollars, and you build up a whole storyline, you build up a character. Uh, Bray Wyatt kind of had a story, but not really. All he did was eliminate people, and it was just again, I don't, I don't want to get too deep into it, but this is, I think, the biggest 
problem with wrestling at the moment is just this level of storytelling that they well not all wrestling of course but if you just kind of stick in WWE it's where are they going and it's constantly just there's nowhere to go with it but. there's any number of writing problems you could highlight but just in the Royal Rumble yeah there there was no singular storyline that was the focus of everything like the Vince versus Stone Cold or the <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, the the Daniel Bryan thing could have been a bigger story. I Daniel guess. Bryan was a non-issue in the yeah. Royal Rumble, which is just that's what perplexes me. I mean, it, it, what, again, everyone's everyone's saying it, so we're not saying anything new. No, but it's um, you know, what, why bring him back at all? Why? It's uh, I just I, I just that that yeah. perplexes me entirely. I mean, like, unless again, of course, like we're gonna wait and see because like we don't know what the plan is until it happens like maybe this there's planting say something bigger oh we don't need to know the plan for him though i mean he was brought back as a as a for marketing the royal rumble this year that's that's why he was probably there yeah probably you know, there was nothing major that happened with him yeah he was a non-factor you know? yeah like he'll sell they know he'll sell people will buy to see because he might yeah. win but i mean you could tell that was so strange as soon as he got eliminated and this the, 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 everything changed awkward like it was it got just, awkward but it was just so like even i was watching it and i was just like ah like you just you just didn't care, you just instantly stopped caring. Did you? Oh uh, yeah, I was just yeah, like yeah. as soon as you and then, feel it. You and then feel Roman it. Reigns comes down and everyone <laughs> is annoyed. <laughs> and it's like everyone's just everyone's just irritated by the situation. Like it's not uh, and it, it's not that people don't like him, it's not that people I mean people are just frustrated. That's all it was. It was just just I, I, again, again this and I think it's kind of down to um <laughs> like the WWE thinking they're smarter than the fans. Like still thinking it's a work, still thinking they're working people when they're not. I, in in a lot of ways, the internet ruined wrestling because everyone became smart. But in a lot of ways, uh, the WWE just refused to accept that people had gotten smart. And like you know, obviously, like you know, we've seen behind the curtain, and we yeah. all know we all know it's a show. But the thing is, everyone's always known it's a show. And it's just it, it's. The story that you tell, like it's not like we all know what's going to happen, but we like to get there. It's like in, if you watch like any television show, like watch Doctor Who, and um, you know that the Doctor is going to get out of it, like you know he is. Yeah, yeah. But you watch it because you want to see how, like you know Superman's going to save the day. Yeah, most which movies you, don't kill their main characters early on in the film. Yeah, but but even generally. still, like I mean, you just watch it. Whereas like WWE, like you know that Roman Reigns is going to win. And you don't care how he does it, and then but even at at the end of it, his victory had was meaningless. Like he didn't eliminate anybody important. Um, there was the no last... story for Roman Reigns. Yeah, I mean, there's like he was unconscious for most of it. He was on the ground for a lot yeah. of it. Um, he was like hiding for a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, um... I just like he should have come <laughs> in. Like, what they probably should have had again, we could we could, uh, fantasy book it all we want, but um, or another day. But what they should have done is. Like have like a load of big strong guys in the ring. Roman Reigns comes out and eliminates all of them. Like he eliminates Mark Henry. He eliminates <clears throat> Big Show. Eliminates Kane. Yeah. Eliminates I don't know he's big anymore. I don't even. I want to say Viscera, but he doesn't. <laughs> he's dead. You get throw Kane out. You know yeah. another another guy. Uh, so you're saying how to do this might not be like rocket science. He just throws a lot of people out. Looks really awesome. Yeah, just looks strong. It? Everyone's like, yo, oh, good lord. And then... He's a spot guy, those little moves that he does. You know, yeah. the punch, the, you know, the drop kick, he could do all this stuff. Yeah. Look amazing. Because, to the point, like, I, I kind of think that Vince McMahon is completely disconnected. Like, 100% completely disconnected from the fans. Or he's a genius. We just don't get it. We, we just don't get it. We just don't see it yet. And that's why I don't want to. I don't want to yeah. say, oh, that was everything. Everything was terrible, and it was boring to watch. Like as a fan, it was boring to watch. I didn't enjoy watching it. No, no. But um, as if it plays out in the long run, and you can watch that Rumble match, and WrestleMania, or even next year's Rumble, which everyone will do, because it doesn't matter how badly we've been hurt, we will watch it. <laughs> um, everything will be. Uh, like if you watch it all in one go it'll all seem like it's one perfect story or they have made just terrible grievous errors but yeah, um, yeah. because the rumble came up uh, I was watching uh, a lot of old rumbles on the network 
um, just to get in the mood, yeah. as I do for all the big pay per views. So you, know, you well, watch due diligence as a fan, really. You yeah, should, you, you should do that. You watch all the WrestleManias leading up to WrestleMania. You yep. watch all the Royal Rumbles leading up to the Royal Rumble, and then you cry because King of the Ring doesn't exist anymore <laughs> and the Survivor Series is terrible now. Yeah, they they've just liquidated those two uh, yeah. things. It's it's interesting. Um, I watched Royal Rumble two thousand on the morning of uh, this year's Royal Rumble. Okay, I'm gonna just before you get into that, I want to say that's that's my favorite Royal Rumble. Um, I didn't, I wasn't her fan for the Ric Flair Royal Rumble, the best one that a lot of people hold so dear. But uh, two thousand was uh, was my Royal Rumble. So big mistake watching that one the night of the same day of this Royal Rumble because. You you gotta know it's not gonna live up to that. A lot to live up to. Yeah, but anyway, sorry. Uh, the rumble itself was fine. The uh, you know I can't even remember who wins. It wasn't the Great Royal Rumble. Was, match. It, was it Big Show and Rock the draw? It was the Rock that won. The Rock won. And the Big yeah. Show complained for a while afterwards. Yeah, and then, about it. and then they had the worst WrestleMania main event <laughs> of Big Show, Rock, Mankind, and Triple H. Triple H, uh, the best main event he's ever had, maybe in WrestleMania. That was actually the first time a heel walked out of WrestleMania champion. The first time ever. Yeah, it was um, Triple H winning in two thousand. It was wow. the first time a heel left as champion. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's crazy. Stone Cold did it again the next year. Was Stone Cold a heel in 2001? Damn right he was. He did the heel turn. Vince McMahon. They oh, shook. of course. That's WrestleMania 17. You yes, made a deal yes, with the yes, devil. Yes, 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 yes. That son of a bitch. Uh, oh my God, and all I can't that. believe it. But the, the anyway. interesting, uh, the whole event of the Royal Rumble 2000 itself was so indicative of the Attitude Era that it's when you look back retrospectively and it's um, gimmick match after gimmick match. <laughs> and um, taught, like, promos before each match. Now, I think some of them are grand. Like, uh, Kurt Angle cuts a fantastic heel promo in his match against Taz. It was Taz's debut, I believe. And he yeah, out, it was. He chokes out Kurt Angle. And um, that was quite... That was a brilliant match, actually. That's a, that's a good hold-up match. And then um, you had a table match between the Hardys and the Dudley Boys. Yeah. And that uh, was a, a lot of promos there. Just... Uh, the worst promo the Hardy Boys have ever done, I think, before that match. Matt Hardy with his, uh, Terry, no! Yeah, yeah. We weren't even meant to be here, but, uh, and then the, 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 the match made up for that, but. I think, was, yeah. was it Jeff? Was it Jeff or Matt that said, Terry, don't go out? Oh, it was, it was Matt. Jeff didn't talk then, for the best. <laughs> he, he shouldn't have talked. It's too dangerous. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it's Terry Runnels. <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. But, um, she came back later in the Royal Rumble, didn't she? She but, did, and I'm going to get to that now. Yeah. Um, I am a big, as you know, Johnny, I'm a big advocate of women's wrestling. Um, a big advocate. I think it's very important. Okay. I think it needs more exposure. The <laughs> Royal Sorry. Rumble 2000 was the birthplace, and I'm pretty sure the only time that the WWF had the Miss Rumble contest. <laughs> this was Miss Rumble 2000. Yes, it was. Now, obviously, it's played tongue in cheek. Obviously, uh, you bring out like all these classic, <laughs> legendary wrestlers like May, uh, Fabulous Mula, Sergeant Slaughter. Was May Pat, Young was too, Pat right? Patterson? He was, might have been a judge. He might have been a Actually, judge. No, I think there was people. I mean, Classy Freddie Blassie uh, and um, uh, Andy Richter from the Conan O'Brien <laughs> show, <laughs> and Andy Richter controls the universe. Yeah. Um, to give was, his expert opinion on was a judge, and uh, you know they're sitting there and they're writing, they're taking notes and everything, looking really serious. Obviously, it's played for last. Yeah. Jerry the King Lawler is the master of ceremonies because obviously because of his history, because of his because of his checkered history. <laughs> he was the um, it's a bit close to the chest <laughs> though, with Jerry. It's a bit risky, but so well. He was the uh, a master there. And you have the women come out in their G strings doing a twirl, and uh, to Jim Johnson's awesome diva taking their clothes off music, yeah. I think, uh, yeah. which was awesome. We had Ivory wearing a fleece, and then her G string. Then <laughs> you had uh, Luna Vachon. In uh, in Attitude Era psychology, by wearing a fleece, was she a heel? But you know, yeah, not, because not she was it. because she was prudish. She didn't want to yeah. again. Ivory, one of the best uh, woman wrestlers, the has been yeah. I, I think I mean <laughs> started out in the the, the the gorgeous ladies of wrestling in the the early 90s and um, just was constantly good I mean like, and she looked great I want to stress this they all looked great oh yeah but <laughs> I mean like that's <laughs> they're all lovely girls they're all, they're all they're lovely <laughs> I 
course, they all have lovely bottoms. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's um, not what we're talking about. That's not. I mean, it's uh, and then uh, the, 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 this whole segment is one of these reasons where I, I you look back with such shame on the actor. Well, I do anyway. I look back as probably one of the the, the best of times and the worst of times for professional wrestling. And um, uh, May Young comes out. Uh, May Young's great. May Young again, one of the best entertainers of all time like up until her late 70s she was still doing uh, suplexes off the top rope she was taking uh, power bombs taking power bombs through tables, tables and Bubba yeah. Ray Dudley laying in no, great <laughs> great great uh, athlete great you know she was really really good for the business so May Young a legend comes to the ring and as she walks to the ring all these fans are giving her the finger it's, just, it's an 80 year old woman and they're all flipping her the bird yell, just just because that's yeah. what you do in the attitude area and she's not as pretty as uh, like the, other, right, the I, other girls in the contest but I, don't, I don't even think they were I don't even think they were doing it out of hatred for her I think they were just doing it because it was just the, I can't imagine a worse time to be a fan in a crowd <laughs> than the attitude area I, I would just like now as an adult I think just uh, just smell like a boy's locker room everyone would be like just Ugh. constantly swearing, constantly greasy. You know, stuff. No. Yeah, no. I hate. I hate other people, and there's a lot of them in those buildings, and they're all close. They smell. They're yeah. loud. That's uh, what I mean. I, I love wrestling. I love going to wrestling shows, but I think the Attitude Era would have been a terrifying time, <laughs> yeah. particularly in like <laughs> cities like New York or like, Philly, maybe, Philly, Philly, or Philly. Jesus, yeah. ECW would have been a fucking like, hellhole. ECW arena looks like a terrifying <laughs> hellhole, and when you watch it back now, obviously at the time it was probably great, but and as a teenager, I thought it looked amazing, but uh. looking back. Back now as a clean adult, um, <laughs> that but that was the first thing, and then as May Young makes her way to the ring, and then of course everyone's like, you know, oh my God, it's May Young. Jr. is having a fit of laughter. <laughs> uh, uh, fabulous Moolah's laughing away, and I mean it's all now at that point. So it's all it was fun. funny. Yeah. It was funny, but yeah, Mula come out. Oh sorry, May Young come out, and uh, she just takes out her boobs. <laughs> just <laughs> takes them out and uh, everyone's freaking out and laughing Miss Kitty's like you know everyone's it's, it's a funny I, I did laugh I cracked up I thought it was funny <laughs> but um just because I, I forgot that they, she did it and then Mark Henry comes and covers her up with a towel and she keeps <laughs> just, yeah <laughs> she keeps escaping <laughs> and uh Fabulous Moolah's and hysterics laughing and I don't know it's funny but and then uh, Mae Young won obviously Jesus. so May, the, the first and only Miss Rumble was Mae Young <laughs> and uh, was that do you think that was because like the Miss Universe contest happens around this time oh man, possibly possibly, possibly just possibly. Throw it because Donald it. Trump does that doesn't he I think it's a January thing I don't know uh, possibly yeah, we should have researched that for this anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's, it doesn't excuse it in any way but. oh no that's <laughs> in like, good lord the, I, this is the most horrendous thing I think I've seen only the the Ku Klux Klan uh, Jim Neidhart uh, costume that he did in one indie show like in 2005 <sighs> was worse than this like that, I mean, Vince Russo has done a lot, but he's, he never did that, so, to be fair. Uh, there are worse things. Almost, yeah. Anyway. I the, mean, yeah, the, it's not like the Nation of Domination were the most, um, and didn't they have a race <laughs> war? And didn't them Xbox, and then when Xbox blacked up? He did, yeah, for Mizark. Yeah. He was, he was Mizark. And, and uh, Triple H blacked up, oh, good lord. And, um, yeah. but, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I remember watching it and thinking, well, now, that you can't say look at the state of women's wrestling now when you look 15 years ago and the state of women's wrestling then <laughs> I mean there wasn't at least in this paper I was like well doing for contra- like, as I said for contrast of War Rumble 2000 they had all paraded out in a, effectively a humiliating angle yeah. and then uh, this year there's a women's tag match with Paige Natty and the Bella Twins and um, Paige and Natalia and I are two of the best women wrestlers in the world currently I'd say Natty definitely Oh, I'll agree with that. Um, Paige, I still think, is brilliant. Um, I don't know if she's the best in the world yet, but she's... You know, she's incredibly young. You know, yeah, she's 21, 22, She's yeah. going to be around for 10 more years. Yeah, yeah, at least. Incredible. And then like, her family's great. I get everyone in that family, everyone in the night family is brilliant at wrestling. And yeah. The, 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 the amount they've done for British wrestling, is, I think, is brilliant. <laughs> Everyone's going on about how great Britney Knight is and what a great prospect. 
So you're a huge fan of women's wrestling in general. I'm a big fan of women's wrestling, and that, that's what... You wish it was better. Yeah, that's what upsets me, and it's, um... I mean, what do you think? You're a... You, you give or take? Yeah, I mean... Take or leave? I... Give or take. Women's wrestling and me have a checkered history, just like, uh, <laughs> just like Jerry Lawler, but, uh... If it's a good match, I'll watch it, you know, depending, it doesn't matter to me, you know, whether men or women, whatever. I, I do remember the Terry, the Terry Reynolds outfit from that competition that you're talking about, because it was like a skin colored, like ridiculous skin colored, uh, I don't know what it was called. Just Google Terry Reynolds 2000 Royal Rumble and you'll find it. I'm not even going to describe what it is because I can't dress myself and remind to describe what that was. I'm pretty sure if someone is listening to a wrestling podcast in 2015, they remember the uh, yeah. Terry Reynolds Royal so, Rumble outfit. That's what I remember from that. Um, I, yeah, anyway, but I think my favorite women's wrestling match that I've seen, and I'm by no means an expert on this because I generally fast forward women's wrestling matches. <laughs> I'm a huge sexist, what can I say? Um, but the, I think Awesome Kong and Gail Kim had an amazing match in TNA mm-hmm. not too long ago maybe maybe 2010 2011 for the title definitely the best women's they, match they ever, usually, I can remember they usually do have great matches Awesome Kong and Gail Kim she's probably my favourite diva of all time Gail Kim Gail Kim yeah. Gail Kim's brilliant yeah Gail, Gail Kim yeah. I don't think she's underrated because I think people do rate her quite highly but how is her promos uh, yeah she's fine she's decent good. enough you know? she's good although there was that brief period where she was I don't think I watched it at the time was it 2000? Yeah, 2011. I was only watching wrestling in 2011, but Ooh. um, she was somebody's girlfriend. Daniel Bryan's girlfriend. That she, was her. Oh, she was. She came to the Fed. Yeah. Or sorry, WWE for for a while after that before they, she left again. Yeah, she was back for literally. I don't know. It was like ten minutes or something. Yeah, just so to be uh, maybe a year or so. Yeah, but yeah. she was his, his girlfriend. Yeah, maybe Dan, yeah, Daniel Bryan's girlfriend. That was her thing. Uh, that, that 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 this this is what I mean. This is what I'm talking about the way somebody like Gail Kim, just the Gail Kim, like the, the superstar in TNA. I guess yeah. I you know build up women's wrestling did such a great job in the indies and uh, she's brought in as Daniel Bryan's girlfriend and um, that's how WWE seemed to portray women on the main show um, NXT does a fantastic job at women's wrestling um, well he's promoting it where you know, the girls get quite a bit of time yeah um, they're treated more like athletes and wrestlers like the guys rather than attractions and eye candy and whatever else they do yeah I mean yeah. if you go to a live show and you, and you when you watch it on uh, pay per view as well the, the women's match is usually the bathroom match it so is okay I'll go to the concession stand I'll go to the toilet <laughs> I mean the main right, to, on you. to be honest this year's Royal Rumble the women's match was my bathroom match uh, but I'm, it was, I'm not gonna that's lie. how it was placed that's how it was placed in this match it was just before the main event yeah um there was a bit of a break between after the main event and the Rumble itself. The Rumble itself had so many moments for bathroom breaks, but... The, um, <laughs> the whole thing was about The whole thing, I mean, you could have left and come back and been fine. Um, yeah. But that's where they placed them in the card. I mean, at WrestleMania, I mean, I remember, was, oh, what WrestleMania was it? Uh, I think the one where Benoit won, or the one where Rey Mysterio won. Who's Benoit? Uh, sorry, when Bleep won, or... Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, six, maybe, or four, or five, or six? Uh, yeah. The triple it, might have been, it might have been 06 where Mary Mysterio won the belt okay it might be that but it was the match where it was a Divas match and the lights went out and they wrestled in the dark <laughs> the entire match and <laughs> nobody noticed what was what was the Meltzer rating for that uh, what about, what about, uh, I think it's the fact that there would have been like the zeros it's NA, so funny if you go to Dave Meltzer's <laughs> website and you see like he has all like the like the dud matches and it's almost entirely Divas matches like, <laughs> I remember a man after my own heart uh, like Eve Marie and all these people who aren't wrestlers so like matches that take place in, in 30 seconds and then get broken up for some reason or oh yeah it's all just you can screaming imagine. and nonsense and the thing is um, <laughs> NXT has fantastic matches with um, the Revolution uh, pay-per-view with was it a Revolution? Oh, no, or it was, Evolution it was the one before the TakeOver uh, oh, yeah, the yeah. second TakeOver well the first TakeOver with um, Natalia and uh, Charlotte Flair which is just a fantastic match like just by anyone's standards just brilliant pure wrestling and there was a great story with uh, Rick and Brett 
Obviously, I'm sure Jim Neidhart was waiting for the call to be in Natty's corner. <laughs> Did he get it? No. No, it was, they brought Brett instead. But uh, Brett, Brett Hart just um, uh, didn't really help. Like, he was just there. I mean, Rick's yeah. doing, Rick's like acting, he's pulling the referee. Was he like, nating in the corner? Like, just yeah, like, the he was, you know, he's going, like, come on, Rev. You know, <laughs> Rick's doing a brilliant job. I, I cried after the end of that match. That was a brilliant really? match. Yeah, just the way. Holy um, shit, really? Not because really? of the match, just the, the emotional level that hit me. Like, Was it Brett's. Uh, no, acting, uh, acting Brett, and Brett, uh, Brett literally, he might have, he, he was, might as well what a cardboard cut out of Brett Hart <laughs> sitting in the corner for the left. He tried, because you can see, see Nate doing it, and he, he tried, he looks like, come on, ref. Just, you know, like, yeah. Like, he's like, I have nothing else to do today, so I guess I'll do that. But um, uh, Johnny Murray on Twitter, if you want to disagree with that. Brett Hart's <laughs> great emotional yeah. uh, delivery. Come get me the internet. Yeah. Um, but the... Uh, yeah, uh, at the end, you know, because Charlotte, it's a brilliant match, Charlotte wins, and... Uh, Breaks kayfabe, I guess. Says thank you to Natty and hugs her, and then Rick just Rick just hugs her and cries because again, like you know, when you know all the history, like you know that the, like uh, the, the, her brother and his son died earlier that year, um, yeah, yeah. or the year a couple of years prior, actually would have been sorry. Um, okay. You know that like the whole like family, everything that the flares have been through, like everything, and like, when you see all that, and this is the combination, and Charlotte is exceptionally living up to the name Flair. Current, I mean, like as far as women's wrestling goes, and this is this is the thing. This this will solidify the legacy of that family, because you can have a lot of generational wrestlers, who are or well, his dad was Rocky Johnson, uh, or like his grandfather was uh, Cowboy Bob Orton. You could almost do a podcast just on that, you know. Oh yeah, sons and grandsons. Of oh yeah, wrestlers. yeah, There was actually there was a there's a, <clears throat> a documentary on the network. The um, the families of wrestling, you know, they're just the most. Oh. Uh, it's not. It's not great. They got. They give so much time. To Depressing. Randy, how bad the job. Randy about. Orton gets so much time. Like he's yeah. treated like a god. Yeah. But no, they, they do. They do do a bit where like the disappointing sons, <laughs> and it's like Brian Christopher. Uh, oh, come on. David Flair. Um, and then it's really it's like it's really, it's There's like, been many worse ones. But it's than like him. It, to me, it's yeah. like they could have just not done that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, who does that help? Yeah, who does yeah, I mean, it's like that? this guy wasn't very good. It's like why does why why even include it? I, I like I like that stuff. You know, but, uh, no, I like knowing like, like, things. Seems like well, why? Well, why did Jerry Lawler say, "Yeah, put my put my terrible son in this"? I heard he didn't want. He, he made a point of not wanting to be connected with uh, with Mister Sexy. So uh, Grand, no, Grandmaster Sexy. As, as well did it been kayfabe, I think. I mean, because yeah. they always played back and forth that they were sons. The same with like when Honky Tonk Man drop a couple of comments here and there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That okay. was in the old areas here. And when um, Honky Tonk Man was his cousin, so they would always mention that. And um, cool. Yeah, no, I mean, but back to the point about it, we're going off track, man. So one of, the Natty <laughs> match was one of your best, your, your favourite It's runs. because they gave them time, they built up the story, they built emotion. Watching Natty and Charlotte have that match, <clears> that is how you build psychology, how you tell a story in the ring. You know, I didn't see that much, just, but that sounds like it could have gone on a WrestleMania. It could have done, I mean, this is the thing, and Charlotte even put up on her Twitter, like, I'll be in the Rumble next year, and win, and you know, and you, she could. Obviously, she won't because she's not going to. But like, it's, it's one of those things where it's a believable character. Like you believe that she believes it, and that's wrestling. And yeah. she believes the character, and that's what's great about it. And she loves wrestling. NXT and a lot of this women's promotion, the Shimmer Wrestling, the woman only promotion, which is brilliant. And like a lot of the indies now are doing uh, the intergender matches with um, the women fighting the men because you know we keep having to remember this that wrestling is not a sport. Professional wrestling isn't just what wrestling, of course, is, but professional wrestling isn't. No. Professional wrestling is an art form that requires athletic ability. Yeah. Like dancing or ballet. It's a, it's gymnastics. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's an art. It's not really, I mean, they're not competing. No, it's no competition there. It's, uh... I mean, like a man isn't physically punching a woman in the head. <laughs> well, Wait, you know, it was no, there's not. In yeah. the same way, I mean, like you can have, <laughs> you can have a man and a woman fight in a movie. That's what you're doing. Yeah. But um, anyway, they got uh, there's a great wrestler called Lufisto in out of Canada, and um, she's in Shimmer, I think, which is the, doing the Indies, and she's fantastic. And yeah. but there's so many great, great indie wrestlers who, if they went to the WWE, would be treated terribly. I, in my opinion, anyway, I'm sure they'll probably be treated quite well. But in my opinion, on television, it's like, well, you know, maybe not so much now, but. Like, look at them going on to the main show and you have to go on a reality show, like Total Divas to Matter, and they start building storylines around it. <laughs> as if to say that the only reason the Divas are on this TV show is because of Total Divas. So, like, you're you're watching a match of the Rumble to further a storyline in a reality show that you don't watch. And never will watch. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, I, I don't know... Total Divas, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's going to add a whole other layer to WWE and women, I guess. 
But I know it's I, like their own little show. I've watched a few episodes of it, and uh, it's not. It's not horrible, but it's also it's just not like you know, it doesn't matter. It's, like, it's it's such an inconsequential thing that exists. Do you think there's any any divas on Total Divas that haven't received enough wrestling training or aren't trained, or yeah, you just well, don't know because you've never seen them wrestle before? Um, Eve Marie wasn't very good at wrestling, if I remember rightly. I haven't seen her in ages though. And mm-hmm. um, there's some again, but like a friend of mine, and he always kind of says, "Well, do, do the women always have to be?" Wrestlers. I mean, that, I'm sure that pissed you off. No, no, because everyone deserves their sp- everyone deserves their place. I mean, you can have like look at Lana being a fantastic valet. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Like you can have that, but again, she's fantastic valet because she's an actress, hmm. which is a thing people always forget about wrestling when it's like, oh, you know, she's like good at promos. Like she's good at promos because she's an actor. Hmm. That's how it works, and the wrestlers are always so shocked by people who are good at things, <laughs> like. Oh yeah, like he's a really good worker. Like, you know, of course he is. He acts for like it's, that's his job. I mean, it's, mm. what you do is acting, right? and then it's it's yeah. because they're so used to just hiring like you know ex football players or bodybuilders who they look the part and they can you know put someone in a headlock. But um, if you look at the Bella Twins match at the Royal Rumble, and uh, again, as I said, I was excited because of course in Royal Rumble two thousand they were paraded, and in Royal Rumble twenty fifteen they have this like kind of exhibition match of like these four big name women wrestlers it's progress and uh, except the, the Bellas just, it's basically like it doesn't matter They're a lit- they are literally women that is their gimmick it's like they're <laughs> women <laughs> and it's like I'm pretty sure again, I, I kind of dip in and out of the current product but um, Bella and uh, Nikki and Brie were feuding and uh, I think Brie was the slave or something you know, some sort of yeah and then they just stopped that just stopped being the case uh Nikki, I think, beat Brie in a stipulation match to become Nikki's slave. So she lost the match, and Brie is now Nikki's slave for a month, I think it was. Oh, for a month. For a whole month. They're, before that match, they were completely at odds. You know, a family feud of the highest order. They even brought the little brother out to, uh, you know, to get a little Jerry Springer segment going. Is that, and, is that uh, the guy from Total Divas? Uh, maybe. I don't even know if it's a shoot brother or not. He could be an actor, but... And I saw, I saw the episode where they had the family and one of the brothers can act and he's the one that does the talking sometimes. Okay. And no that's, else. that's his, uh, his I say, skill. I say, I say he can act. <laughs> so, yeah, the, Nikki was uh, was lording it over Brie for a month, uh, being devious and evil. Kind of like the uh, the weird Barrett thing with John Cena when he was kind of calling John Cena's shots for a month after he won that stipulation match. I can't remember when that was. It was when the Nexus was still around. Um, but yeah, the slave thing ended after the month and... I think maybe the next week it was just erased. Yeah, as if it never happened. As if it never and happened. And that's what I mean. This comes back to our initial point that the WWE keeps thinking they're smarter than the fans in this idea where we'll disrupt the storyline, they don't care, it's any wrestling. And that's, that's just absurd to me. And now we're watching... It doesn't just happen with women, but it seems to happen the most with women where like there's no face, there's no heel, there's no story, yeah. nothing is built up. And that's why I think when things like the Charlotte Flair and Natty Nightheart match happen and it's so good it gets starts getting amped up more because you're so not used to seeing that <laughs> level of women's wrestling on the WWE programming and um, again you can watch great indie wrestling matches but you can also watch some terrible ones and you can watch some great like TNA have a great uh, women's division and again I think I'm not alone in this but one of my biggest peeves as well is how they, they can't just call them women they have to be divas the divas or their knockouts it's like they're superstars for women. They're yeah, just women. call them superstars. They're women superstars. Just call them superstars. Why are they not superstars? And it's just like all the superstars <laughs> and divas. I never thought of that. So like, right you're now. not a superstar. You're a diva. Like effectively. And it's what like, if I, I don't want to be a diva? I'm not a diva. Yeah, it's like no, I'm a super. Like the same like Trish Stratus says, you know, like I'm a woman wrestler. Right? It's my I'm a wrestler. It's like no. Diva's you're kind a diva. of a negative word to use. I think I just think it's patronizing. Yeah. It's like I think when they did that smart, sexy, confident <clears throat> thing. Oh. It's like. It's my favorite video Wait, package. Well, I understand how patronizing that is, <laughs> and it's I imagine like you know like Randy Orton, smart, sexy, confident. I mean that's like, mm-hmm. and he is man. He's in his underwear on stage all the time. That's confidence. Looks like the Diet Coke guy. <laughs> he does look like the Diet Coke guy, but they're not they're not putting him out like that. You no. know, it's like that's not his gimmick. Uh, yeah, it's not his gimmick. No, but apparently every woman has the same gimmick, and their their gimmick <laughs> is that they're smart, sexy, and confident because WWE had basically humiliated women for decades prior they don't know how to do women do they like well th- obviously S- NXT does NXT does yeah it's weird I, Vince I guess, doesn't <laughs> I guess Vince doesn't I guess he doesn't or someone was saying that I mean 
again, I don't know how it works, but it does seem like uh, Emma is a great example from NXT. Like Emma mm. was great on NXT, great on NXT, and um, great solid worker, great look. Should easily have transitioned to yep. the main show, but uh, her gimmick in NXT, which is an indie promotion with money, that's what NXT is. Uh, her gimmick was she was a bad, goofy dancer, and that came from a <laughs> dance off she had with another diva. I don't, I'm not sure who, and her thing was, oh, I have this goofy dance. She does the goofy dance to the ring. The fans all enjoy it because it's an indie crowd at an indie show who like small little indie tidbits of people moving their arms in a silly way. It's dumb and we love it. Yeah. Why not? And we like Emma because, oh, and like, you know, the, it's, the commentators are so good. They, they talk as if like they're friends with her. It's like, Emma's just, you know, she's great. And then Emma goes to the main show and she continues to do the dance without any explanation to this new millions of people who watch <laughs> Raw and SmackDown what the dance is about. They don't get it. Like she, and it, it, it's exactly like um, in The Simpsons when uh, Homer is the mascot for the little like the, the local team in Springfield mm. and then he goes to Capital City yeah. as the dancing Homer and they're all like this may fly in the minor leagues but this is the big city. As are the isotopes? Yeah, yeah. But he's, he's, he dances for the isotopes and they move him to the Capital City goofballs. And they don't get it. Yeah. And they don't get it, they don't care. Like, and, we've like, seen this exactly before. exactly what it was like and I just like and everyone's sitting there no one's reacting to her. <laughs> yeah, I, fuck, I fucking hate her. She's dying on her feet flailing her arms and just some sort of stupid feud with the uh, <laughs> God, was it like uh, Summer Rae and Santina Morella or something maybe and uh, oh, that, whole, that whole period of time that was, that's back when I was trying to get into watching episodic wrestling oh and um, yeah it didn't, didn't last too long it's pretty Just tough when you have Summer Rae who's great Summer Rae's fantastic great look great move great, and she's fantastic at wrestling she's an athlete in NXT yeah, she's yeah. a dancer yeah and um, he's an American footballer too, a female American. Footballer. Oh no, like it was like a lingerie bowl. Oh like, really? Like, See, like, like they worked me. That was yeah, yeah, yeah it's like a modeling. Deal. But me. she was in uh, the Marine, like whatever one the Miz was in, like the Marine Nine. Four. <laughs> so was like four I've seen the Marine Three with the Miz. Fucking amazing film. This is going to be even better with the Marine Four. Oh, is, is Miz in two Marine movies? Oh, uh, he's in three, and he's going to be in four as well. So he's basically going to be in two. Reprising his role. Yeah. So was it John Cena, Ted DiBiase Jr. And then the Miz. And then the Miz. <laughs> okay. The Miz. Uh, have you seen the Marine Three? Just on I haven't seen any of the Marines. Y- y- please watch the Marine Three. It's just the Marine Three. Will it, I get lost if I don't see Marine One and Two? Oh no, you won't. It's they're all reboots of each other. <laughs> it's different every every yeah, time. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, if it ain't broke, right? Breaking the record for I mean, how quickly to reboot something. Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't, if it keeps making bank. <laughs> Maybe it's like James Bond, where it's always a different. Person yeah, every a time. different marine. Yeah. You know, I, I remember like uh, Randy Orton was meant to play the marine until the marines <laughs> had a petition to stop him from doing it because the shoot he, marines, the real ones. Yeah, because he deserted the marines. He was in military yeah. prison for deserting. <laughs> so they. Um, I would have loved that even more then. Yeah, because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny. They petitioned against him from being in the marines. If I was somebody, I went fuck off. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, who's gonna see? Who care? Yeah, he's just it's, it's a marine. Yeah, whatever. Um, but uh, what were you talking about before? Uh, yeah, so Summer Rae was in the marine. And uh, this is like, this whole period of time, I just got so annoyed, and it was just basically <laughs> so JBL or somebody saying, Summer A is in the Marine, the new Marine film. And I was like, no, she's not. The actress that plays Summer A is in the Marine film. Yeah. Summer Rae is Fandango's dance partner who's <laughs> feuding with Emma. That's what Summer A is doing. It's like, so, it's like it'd be like similar like watching um, Gladiator of Russell Crowe. Or watching, sorry, Robin Hood and Russell Crowe and saying, like, oh, he's also in Gladiator. That Robin Hood's in Gladiator. Mm-hmm. So he's not... It's Russell he's Crow, just come actor, from Rome and now he's in England. Yeah, the actor that portrays Robin Hood is in Gladiator. <laughs> and it, it just, it, uh, just that, all those things, this whole, like, yeah. collection of them misusing Emma. And Summeray was also... She had this... Her problem... And she was great, but her, she had a huge problem, which was, like, quite common in the Divas wrestling, of overselling. Uh, they oversold Eric Scream and flop around and for small things she would yeah, say yeah no, and you know you know scream and yell as if and I, I'm sure somebody told her to do it or maybe she was just doing it but it's Fully, like uh, Finley Finley uh, 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 but let's not I don't, I don't, I don't dwell on the name but, but I, I don't know either but like but it's just yeah I mean that's my thing is just when you watch Charlotte and Talia and it's subtle selling but it's po- it's strong selling no one's yelling no one's screaming you're not like acting like I mean, they're acting like wrestlers. 
and that's what it's meant to be and they're telling a fantastic story and it, it can be done but for some reason it doesn't happen and um, I think that's to bring it back to the rumble that this is what it's showing is just like this they're limited in their storytelling abilities yeah but, it'd be weird to see you know obviously China I think is the only female to ever be in the Royal Rumble match no no Beth Phoenix Phoenix was she was in it yeah, yeah. okay she eliminated Santino Morales. Well, Charlotte's made the you know the, the claim that she's going to be in a Royal Rumble, so maybe she will. She be will. In if, she gets in, if, they, if they use it right, there's always. I mean, uh, yeah. She's going to debut soon, isn't she? On the show. I think she's going to have to, right? They. I mean, everyone's talking about. They it. had her on a couple of weeks ago, and I think she lost to maybe Natty on Raw. Uh, am I am, yeah. I am I imagining this? Like like a like yeah. a s- strange little match. Yeah, people were really annoyed about it. Um, like that's not how you debut somebody like that. But it wasn't a debut, but it was. Yeah, I think she was it'll be gone. it'll be forgotten about. I'm sure, like another diva that they you know restart again and just yeah, yeah. drop the storyline. Yeah. Anyway, but it's shocking. <laughs> yeah, I mean for me it was, it was divas wrestling means Trish Stratus and Lita. Those are my divas. Oh yeah, that's a fantastic. They're, they're there when they headlined Raw. That was brilliant. Yeah, that was a fantastic match. Again, that that was a 2004 or five. Yeah, whatever. But I mean, kind of contrasting styles. They both had established characters by then real characters not uh, you know m- m- lingerie models um, and yeah decent wrestlers they obviously both improved a lot over the years when they were there um, got characters established move sets like the guys mm. they were treated as almost like equals yeah, the time they, 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 at least had, by the time they left they had their own fans like, yeah. they had their own fans it wasn't like people were cheering oh yay she is going to get her boobs out I mean people like no. Yeah, there's a brilliant photo. The brilliant photo of AJ Lee getting Lita's autograph when AJ Lee was a teenager, like thirteen. Oh, really? And it's um, AJ Lee's crying because Lita hers was her idol. Yeah. And she's meeting Lita. AJ Lee is really good. Yeah. Um, again, great at storytelling. And she again, she gets it. It's like people when you see and they kind of like it seems like they understand exactly, like what they're doing exactly the show. Yeah. She obviously she's a wrestling fan. Life mm. obviously. Uh, I think her gimmick last year was the one that wasn't involved with Total Divas and being proud of that it seemed I mean I watched a little bit of the show um, I every coming, week so I kind of got that she coming was, more and more out that you do watch Total Divas I love it like initially it started God, I've Domino. never seen an episode well you know there's <laughs> Eva Maria's you know the, you know, she's amazing so you know, five stars <laughs> she is she's a recovering alcoholic because I learned from Total Divas really? I didn't know that it, it, is, it is on the network it's the whole episode of them going to Breeze <sighs> Bachelorette party just endears her even more to me now. And then, I want to take care of her just give her a cup of tea I think she's married uh, she won't be no, but she won't be fine I don't care and when you get there <laughs> like, oh, well, so first you know, get more training go to the WWE uh, training center meet her train together sleaze on her for a while and then whatever I'm d- uh, I like yeah. sleazing on her that, that, is, that is what leads to love <laughs> it's just in sleazing, my case it is yeah. sleazing on someone <laughs> from afar um, <laughs> yeah Asia Lee she's been like the, the, the real wrestler in the Divas division for the last couple of years uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, obviously others have been there too you know but uh, she's the one that stood out to me the casual Divas fan that I am like she's the one I like yeah I mean that's, this is another thing actually you bring this up now just thinking about it is uh, Paige and AJ had like a mini feud kind of deal there for a while ah, for eight months Yeah, eight months since Wrestlemania like, what? no Paige and AJ didn't Paige debut like shortly after Wrestlemania last year or just after oh, Wrestlemania yeah. it, it all blends together oh, after yeah. oh, it's gone. was it a year ago but I mean yeah, they had she, the, she won. Yeah, she won like the night. best friends story and then the lesbian thing and like, I know, that's, this is my other problem you know this what I mean like every wrestler is a lesbian yeah I noticed that actually Larry Paige, Paige pinned and stuff with the sexy pin, yeah, and does like the licks and all that. That's kind of similar to um, uh, Mickey James and Trish back in the day, um, and it was James. a Tory and Sable. God, like Tory, really? not Tory Wilson, the other Tory. The Tory from DX. Yeah, when she was like the stalker. Yeah, I liked her. And um, yeah, she was good. She was she was actually, she was good too. Like she was great. That was that was a good angle actually. That she couldn't talk or wrestle, but I mean she, she uh, was. Yeah, no, she couldn't talk. God no, it's t- oh the, the Bellas can't talk either. Though. I mean, I was just bring it up back up modernly. It's just yeah, like the Bellas. Just the, was that the cane in the back <laughs> of the car? Or? No, Daniel, Daniel. She said yeah. Daniel about ten times in that segment. That's I don't know why they thought it was a good idea. I honestly, yeah, this is the thing that kind of confuses me. Like the way that the Bellas are positioned as like the, the main divas. Yeah, that that they I, are. They I, are. Don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why. They're the John Cena and Roman Reigns of the diva division. Yeah, they are. It's if true. you're gonna, you know, make comparisons, they, they, also, they have actually got quite good at wrestling. Um, Nikki's a pretty good wrestler, I think. 
Yeah, which is the one that's John Cena? That's Nikki. That Nikki, yeah, she is. She's good. She gets a lot of wrestling matches this this last couple of months. Yeah, she's champion, isn't she? I don't know. I guess stupid butterfly belt they gave them. Yeah, the butterfly. That was the AJ belt that I think she started with it. Maybe I don't know. But did she didn't design it? Surely that is the belt they gave her. No, no, no. That was just that. After that, no. She is maybe the first holder of it. I I don't know. The NXT woman's belt is fine, but there's other things. But they keep trying to make it all girly looking. Just give them a belt. (laughs) What does it? What does it matter? Like it's almost (laughs) like oh no, you can't have that. Well, Murray, how far do you think we are from a, a, a a world? Where a Divas match could headline a Raw. Yeah. Oh, no, not far at all. Um, headline a Raw. I mean, it's already happened. Um, could happen again, couldn't it? Well, yeah, I, th- I think once... Obviously, it'll never have headline a pay-per-view, but Raw's, you know. Well, there was talk a Why while not? back before SmackDown became a thing where SmackDown was going to be a, a woman's only show. Oh. Um, I, I'm guessing the talent pool must have been too um, shallow at the time to do it, but I think now... It seems like a crazy idea now. Um, yeah, but I still think... I don't know if I don't think you could have a woman only pay per view. Um, just I just don't think. No. I mean, it works in Shimmer and stuff like that. It's it's because that's the kind of you know it's it's the platform for it. Yeah, if that's your brand. WWE, yeah, but... I don't think the fan base would go for it. But um, I think correctly built with the correct people, particularly Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, uh, Becky Lynch, Natty Nightheart, Bailey in NXT, um, uh, Page. Page, yeah, and AJ, all these people. Uh, even if you want to have the Bellas. I mean, to be honest, the the more likely thing would be like a Bella match main eventing Raw just because Yeah. Maybe it'll be an angle in the show. But um Pretty I think, sure, yeah, there was a Bellas and Stephanie promo once that ended a Raw. Oh yeah, yeah. Not yeah, too didn't, long ago. Didn't Stephanie and one of the Bellas headline Raw or something? They might have done. They might have done. Yeah, which one's Daniels? Nikki. Yeah, There's yeah. a contract sign? Oh, Brie, was Brie. It? Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure they had a match. The Brie versus Stephanie match? Yeah, was that, yeah, yeah. that may have been something. I don't know. That, that's that maybe what it was. Mania? Oh, fuck, no, really? Brie no, no. I'm pretty sure Brie and Stephanie had a match. Stephanie did have a match with Brie, but... Why, I why can't we remember? You should look this up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. It's but, um, rubbish. I yeah, but uh, I, think, I think we're close. I think, again, if the story is told right, and if the story is told consistently... Mm. Yeah. Like, this is something you and I actually were talking about. This the idea of consistent storytelling. And it's not, it's not even just women. Again, I'd love to see it even just kind of, if they were going to try it out, try it out with Charlotte Flair and um, Nat and Talia Neidhart and build that whole Hart Family Flair feud. Like, what they did for TakeOver and do that on a huge scale. Yeah. Throw Sasha Banks in the mix, why not? I mean, that's a that's a WrestleMania-level name value. No, I think mm-hmm. definitely, 100%. Easy. 100%. That, I, I would have put that match at WrestleMania, 100%. That sounds amazing. But, um... The uh, the idea is understand by just this consistency in storytelling, and I think you had this idea of just the uh, soap operas and how soap operas like EastEnders and Coronation Street that have existed for so long, um, with like a script and a, a consistent, coherent story, yeah, with all the characters in play, and um, I, I think we both kind of agree that that would be kind of a model that WWE should really start yeah. focusing their writing team on, where. It's kind of a strange thing to be, you know, wishing WWE was more like be a more soap like opera, EastEnders. like but like EastEnders, but they do it better, don't they? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but it's it's it's, it's not so much. I mean, again, I, I don't the stories to me in EastEnders wouldn't really be that interesting, but no, it, it's it's more so use the model for wrestling and have like um, a hat of faces, a hat of heels, or a hat of gimmicks, yeah, and then just <laughs> take out the names and then oh, that's our story now. So it's like it's gonna be John Cena and. I don't know who's a heel like uh, Seth Rollins Seth Rollins in then their feud is over like the belt <laughs> something as simple as that <laughs> and just it, yeah. I mean what it shouldn't people always say oh you know you have to do it yourself like you, you have to go be stone cold it's like well you shouldn't have to you mean get over yourself yeah, yeah. I mean they shouldn't have to I mean they. Should, I mean, obviously they're given all these tools to help and you're going to do so much but like <laughs> I mean really? WWE should have stories in place yeah. and say well we want to do this now we want this to be and to me it's simple as good and evil we're covering quite a lot we are we should yeah. probably save some yeah yeah but we're talking about storylines yeah so and keep high, it too. yeah high can... storylines is an overarching concept though, yeah it's pretty really? big it's pretty wide but um we might get a lot out of this again to bring it into and um, this is what I'm saying with the 2015 one because how they didn't really seem to plant any stories in that rumble it wasn't it wasn't prepared for at all no, yeah, no, no even, stories are prepared for. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like we even just discounting the crowd reaction, like where are the feuds from that? Like if you look at the, they could have had Damien Sandow 
and The Miz have a thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden that's a match for Mania. Yeah. Where The Miz and like, the super over Damien Sandow, who's I loved for... How long have I said I love Damien Sandow? You've, you've been a Sandow super fan for at least two years. At least two years. I mean, I'm a big, big Ever since Sandow. I've known you, you've been yeah. a huge fan. Big Damien Sandow fan. And um, there he is, like... <laughs> God, the, the Finally, as, as famous as he is, as he's always been with yeah, you, I everyone mean, loves him. But he's, he's, he, was, he was the one thing that the fans cheer for. The one thing after Brian got eliminated. And he's in for two minutes, I guess. Not even, not even two minutes. He's in yeah. for like 30 seconds. <laughs> he was in and then he was out. He didn't do anything when he was in either. Uh, it's the, you know, the tone deaf booking the WWE had. That, oh, when Brian gets eliminated, we'll need something else for the people to latch on to, to, to be happy about again. That's what it was. Well, but they, but they sent up, but they sent out Roman Reigns as, oh, if, so as if he was the one. I forgot about Roman Reigns. But uh, I'm sorry. That, but that's who they, that to me is who they <laughs> sent out to because they, they apparently what I'm hearing is the reason that Brian went out was because of um, they didn't want to take away from Roman Reigns. But Roman Reigns coming out was almost like it's okay, fans. Your your fan favorite Roman Reigns is here. Thank heavens! And everyone was just obviously <laughs> upset. And um, I was so happy when Roman Reigns came out. Like. I, I almost forgot who, <laughs> who Daniel Bryan is. You know, it was the yeah. best moment. I what are they booing for? <laughs> he has wet hair already. Oh. It's amazing. And that was the uh, interesting thing. People cheered for CM Punk, and he's been gone for a year. They cheer. They cheer for him that when when they disagree with what's happening, don't they? Oh, so I mean, CM Punk now. Just, yeah. they, he's basically the bullshit. That's the spiteful chant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So CM Punk is basically the bullshit. PG bullshit. Yeah, this is awful chant. And then sometimes it'll be bullshit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like sometimes fuck like, it. That bullshit. was later in the show. Where they had the bullshit chant with the. The final three, I oh, think. And they all there actually God, was a yeah. bullshit chant. That guy was so awkward to watch. But yeah, but, but even like disregarding all of that, look at the story that was written for the Royal Rumble. What story? And I mean, there was no feuds. They kind of teased the Gold Dust Stardust thing, but no one gave a crap about that. No. Nope. Who cares? No. Nope. Um, God, I feel so bad for Cody Rhodes. I don't feel bad for him. He's so good. Cody Rhodes is so good. He's on his way to having but, like a Brutus the Beef kick. Mm -hmm. he's, on, <laughs> he's almost on the way to having. The same amount of gimmicks as Brutus the Barber Beefcake, which is like 30 or something. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, but he Ed always, Leslie had like 15 gimmicks. Oh, he's kind of a barber. Like yeah. Always... Oh, well, he was a butcher as well. Rhymes with barber. Kind Brutus of. the Beefcake Butcher? In WCW, he was the butcher. I need to look into this. And then the Dungeon of Doom, he had some other crazy gimmick. But anyway. Oh, uh, Lord. You know, but, he evolved like a, like a train station or something? <laughs> no. Yeah, like he's all high on coke or just that. It's on Wikipedia. Fair oh. play. We'll look into that later. <laughs> it's yeah. just a really weird story. <laughs> Would you, I don't think anything was different after the Royal Rumble this year than it was before. Like, no... No, I agree. No consequences were had for anyone except the winner. That yeah, was the only no thing see, that no was... No seeds are planted. No yeah, seeds are planted. nothing. Nothing happened. But, yeah. It's hard not to be so negative about it, though. You know? No, but, I mean, it was so, fine. Constructive-wise, was... I mean, to me, like, I, I, I could fantasy book the Rumble now. Um, I don't I, we don't have much time left, but... Um, if we say... Like, I would have NXT guys in there. I would be building up stars that way. I probably wouldn't have put DDP in it. Um, no, I, I, I like DDP fine, but you I need, think... You need a, a veteran, don't you? Well, yeah, you need, you need fun for the fans. You need some fun. I, mean, I, I probably wouldn't have wasted my time with the boogeyman. <laughs> um, no, no. I mean, you know, what they should have done... Uh, again, it's going to completely everything against I've said about like how women's wrestling should be treated seriously, but they probably should have um, got the Godfather out with the hoe train <laughs> and get the crowd. That would have that would have excited the crowd. With the hoes, should should they have been like the diva wrestlers? Like that was that <laughs> Jesus Christ, no, uh, Lord. Bring out Terry Reynolds again. That would be that would be completely. That's that's what that's what Vince would do. Like, Send out Charlotte Flair with the hoes. Nobody will recognize them because they have different names now. You know, they're the hoes. Number one the, through um, ten. <laughs> one to two, yeah. But um. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, the <laughs> same deal with, like, uh, Bubba Ray Dudley coming out as Bubba Ray Dudley. He was only in the WWE for four years. He was in TNA for ten. And he was the top bloody heel in TNA as Bully Ray. And he was great. Yeah. And he's coming out like a, like a throwback, like a caricature, like a novelty. Like DDP. Like DDP. Like 58-year-old DDP. <laughs> Bubba Ray Dudley comes out in his glasses and his camo, which is barely... Like, he look, oh, God, it looked ridiculous. Starting, That's embarrassing. Wasn't starting it? his own chant... What, what was the chant he started? Tables, table, and it was. Did you, did you chant? No, I, just, I, I, I actually cringed. I actually <laughs> cringed. And I think Jesus. You know, I, no, I say he was great. I mean, Bubba Ray Dudley's good. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of him. Um, but like when he was a star, like he was the big draw in TNA. Yeah. And that just shows you they don't care. Like, I mean, that's that to me that was ridiculous. I mean, he's been on TV for ten years in a different company. 
10 years. And Near then, the top of the roster as well. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe less than 10 years. Well, I need, I need to look into this again. I'm pretty sure, but I'm pretty sure he had left by 2006. Johnny Murray, Twitter. You can tell and, uh, yeah, to Correct me. Well, don't, I don't know, either way. But it's, um, yeah, he, uh, I just thought, I don't know. And, Anyone else? Was anyone else? I can't even remember if there's any other surprise entrance. Surprises? Uh, Boogeyman, Dudley, uh, DDP. That was that was about it. There, there you are three. That's your three. Like, <laughs> That's your even your Diesel. Three. Even Diesel didn't make his obligatory <laughs> appearance. I was happy about that. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, you, you had the idea of debuting quite a few NXT guys. Yeah, well, uh, we have time to. Well, it's a fantasy book. Probably not. Probably yeah. not, not this time. Not this time. We'll, well, we'll do it. We'll do it. You know what? That's, that'll be the next podcast. We'll fantasy book the Rumble. I'll what? do mine and you do yours. Yeah, because I really hate your idea. It's terrible. <laughs> it's the worst thing I've ever heard. Or the actual Royal Rumble is better than yours. Uh, yeah, we, we will see. We will see. <laughs> no, but yeah, we will. It's, next, it's going to be good. Next, next one. I think I'll be, yeah, we will do that. We will uh, fantasy book. Yeah? I'm quite excited, yeah. And I'm going to have all, like, all my mystery opponents who are probably dead now. It has to be. It has to be a, a possible... Fantasy Fantasy possible, so I can't have the something that's British bulldog. No, 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 no British bulldog. No uh, <laughs> CM Punk. Nothing like could never ever happen in 2015. Okay, yeah, a, a, a feasible. Okay, that's all. That, that makes more sense. We'll have yeah. basically what they should have done. Yes, that would happen better. We will give you two scenarios that will have been better than what happened in 2015. Yeah, just the rumble match itself. I mean, because I think I think the rest of the card was fine. Um, yeah, I mean, if they, I, I loved loved Triple Threat. Well, that was one of the best matches in a very long time. I I'd say it's probably yeah I would say it's my favourite triple threat of all time I'll agree with that um, I loved everything about it yeah it was tremendous match and it, you know what it is because triple threat is so hard to get right I mean there was a good one the uh, Benoit Shawn Michaels Triple H one was good yeah but it was done in that way where it was so often just two on two Oh, one on one, you mean? So, one on one, so yeah, so one on one with someone's the, outside so, yeah, the ring. Yeah, somebody's hurt, and then so they can do the match, and then someone comes in and they swap. <laughs> um, although they had that great bit where Shawn Michaels is about to tap, and Triple H runs in and grabs his hand so he can't tap, and he can't uh, survive. That was brilliant. It's a good spot. But um, in this one, it was just the three guys were constant. It was yeah. John Cena, and that's that's because people forget. I mean, obviously, because Seth Rollins is relatively new in WWE, but people forget how long Tyler Black has been on the scene as, as yeah. a professional wrestler. And uh, like he's such he's such a good wrestler, and um, <laughs> he understands psychology. He he's got great instincts. He understands everything that he's doing. And John Cena is brilliant, and I don't care what anyone says. John Cena is brilliant. He is a professional wrestler. Brock Lesnar is brilliant, and again you have like I'm guessing Cena was probably leading the match, or probably I mean, yeah. Cena or Rollins. I don't think Brock Lesnar was leading. I'd say it was then, all very very closely mapped out. Yeah, okay, little bits about yeah, yeah. Paul Heyman probably had a wee bit to do with it too, and. Um, my friend actually thought Brock Lesnar was legit injured. Legit, yeah. So it's Stone, it Stone Cold's podcast. He said he thought it was legit. Injured. Some good selling there by Lesnar. Oh yeah, oh God, that, that, when he came out, and <laughs> when he's um, uh, suplex was that, do you suplex Rollins from nowhere. He does the suplex with no uh, uh, assistance or knowledge from the opponent. Like he just does the yeah, suplex. Uh, just, that was brilliant. Oh, I love it. Uh, I, love that was, it. I, I, I would watch that match again, and that's what annoys yeah. me. The, uh, the the women's tag match was fine. Like it was there, it happened. Um, it, uh, the curtain jerk. Oh, sorry, there the pre-show with um. How dare you? What do you call it? Uh, Cesaro, Think... Tyson Kidd, and the New Day. The New Day. Um, I don't understand the New Day at all. Uh, it was a really weird group. But the um, uh, it's, well, it was turned into like a, a rumble review show. <laughs> but um, look what happened there. Yeah. yeah. We said we weren't going to do that. We said we were going to do that before we went into it. What happened at the start? The Ascension, right? Oh yeah. Remember the Ascension, Ascension and uh, and uh, the New, New Age Dallas. Outlaws. Yeah. 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 Oh, that'll be a they, whole other. No, that that's gonna be a whole other podcast. The Ascension and that. Suffice to say, is they had a match. Yeah, that will be a whole other podcast. I'll yeah. get into that one. Yeah, anyway, they did stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, so I guess we can, can kind of conclude it with our storyline idea. It's just it's just this lack of consistency that is consistent in WWE storytelling. Yeah, there's so much you can go into this. I mean, we'll come back to storylines and. Oh yeah, I mean, this what be the last could be time better. You talk know? about it. I mean, it's, it's not so much what's better. It's just it's just like a, a way of doing it. I, I think entirely, it's just to do with consistency, and respecting the fans' intelligence, and respecting the fans. And as I say, like, I mean, they're they're at a point. WWE are at this kind of like unique point of popular culture and this entertainment where they have instant feedback, like instant feedback. Yeah. And they can instantly change it, and they don't. I mean, like, th- there was no more instant feedback than Roman Reigns winning the Rumble and people booing him. Yep. I mean, question that. 
Like, there's no more instant feedback than the, the Daniel Bryan thing. I mean, people generally... I mean, obviously, like, you can look at it whatever way you want, but, I mean, obviously, WWE think, well, you know, we'll just stop watching. And it's like, well, if you... You're not going to stop watching because it's wrestling. I mean, I haven't watched <laughs> Raw or SmackDown in years, like, fully. But, like, I can still understand what's happening. I'll still... Like, obviously, it's meaningless in what I say. And, but just all... I think it's fair just to respect the fans and respect that there's a story to be built there. Respect the art. I mean, make me care. Like, the I didn't care about 26 of the people in the Rumble. Didn't care at all. That's a that's a bit of an indictment. I mean, but did did you care? Like, would... No, I uh, I cared about the rumble itself because oh, like, yeah, the, yeah, the concept, I always yeah. want the match to be a good one because it's one of my favorite matches. Oh as like, yeah, it's always been yeah, it's a fantastic concept. Uh, I I kind of when I watched the rumble myself, I was kind of it was like an outer body experience, hoping it would be a good match and always being nervous that it wasn't going to be one because last year that's what happened and so many times like lately that's what's happened do you think it was bad last year or do you think it was just it was I loved it last year I loved it because of the crazy when when stuff like that happens when the hijacking happens I just enjoy the the madness of it all my favorite bit was like Kane trying to hide (laughs) yeah and he kept getting on camera he was at ringside trying to hide yeah because I think he he had to get CM Punk out earlier Oh then, right! Because you know, remember he chokes down CM Punk through the table. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was according to like the CM Punk podcast there with um, Cole Cabana, and it was um, <laughs> it came, he basically he got concussed, and Kane was going to take him out earlier, but um, so Kane's like trying to hide behind the camera guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like he's eight feet tall. Or whatever, <laughs> it's like so the, he's just one like, of the he's biggest guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. He should have just sat there at ringside, like he was watching the match or something. Yeah, should have done that. Yeah. So what you saying? But, uh, uh, yeah, I was just well, I was hoping it would be good and uh, kind of willing it on to be a better match the whole time because I, I want it to be the best match of the year almost because I don't for me personally Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view mm-hmm. uh, uh, so it was quite hard to focus on a lot of things like I for that reason I couldn't really tell you very much about what happened in the match uh, I know Bray Wyatt was in the ring a lot by himself eliminating people uh, but other than that I can't remember very much and if it was like an open challenge and then Zack Ryder comes out yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna have an open challenge to any superstar would have been a good opportunity to have someone good come out or anybody anyone but Zack Ryder imagine if the Undertaker came out imagine <laughs> imagine lights go down and it's the Undertaker oh, holy god. crap everyone would be like oh my god that would have been yeah. that would have been great or Sting my, my like god. anybody of interest Zack Ryder I didn't even know he was gone <laughs> I thought he was yeah I thought he was future endeavoured already but uh, uh, I guess that'll be a couple of months. Justin Gable would have been a good twist. Oh, I thought he was fired. It's a low blow. Yeah. It's a low blow. Good uh, luck, Justin. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, once once Daniel Bryan was eliminated, kind of unceremoniously, without any pomp or circumstance, mm. it was you could tell the crowd was gone. Uh, I think it was, it was a it was similar, awkward. a similar kind. Of, again, it, it wasn't the same thing as um, the uh, Undertaker's loss. But it was a similar kind of sigh, where it was just like oh, God. sad, sad, I mean, sad, fed up. Like a lot of people were like, oh. like the abuse. You know what it was? You know what it was? It's because people like to get excited for WrestleMania. Yeah, that's what it was. And people were, and the way it wasn't that he was eliminated. It's how he was eliminated. Yeah, that took away any excitement for me. And I was like, because the way it, it wasn't even. I I don't, I don't even think the camera caught it. When he got eliminated, I, I'm pretty uh, sure it wasn't like it was following like, oh my god, Daniel Bryan's eliminated. It was it was presented like a like a like anybody. Of, yeah, literally like anybody. Like Very by the way, eliminated. you know. And he's Daniel Bryan. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> It's like Cena being eliminated offhand, like it doesn't mean very yeah. much, you know. Yeah, like it was meaningless. Yeah. Like, anyway, who's eliminated? Who's eliminated? Oh, who's eliminated? Oh, Bray, but still. <sighs> <laughs> but anyway, it wasn't you know, it wasn't the worst. We'll get into we'll get into a. We'll get into our fantasy booking next time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think. Do you have anything else? Is that no, else? I'm happy enough right now. We covered the rumble in good enough detail for me. I think good detail. Uh, we got to touch women's wrestling. Yeah. We'll try and get a bit more in depth next time, I guess. And yeah, I should really watch some more women's wrestling to qualify myself. I will make you a compilation of matches. A mixed tape of women's wrestling? A mixed wrestling? tape of women's wrestling. It'll be all about my Valentine's gift for you. Thanks. <laughs> and um, okay, so I think that's us. Yeah. Take care, everybody. All right, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>